Hello, my name is Dr. Jason Wittes, and I am the Pharmacy Director at Wake County Human Services, located in Raleigh, North Carolina. I graduated from the University of Rhode Island with my doctorate in pharmacy in 2009 and have practiced in Raleigh since. Today I'm going to speak to you about needle exchange programs and how vital they are to the community. Objectives for today's presentation will be to discuss decreased HIV and hepatitis C infection rates through the use of syringe exchange programs, methodology and cost reduction associated with these programs, and lastly, I want to address the general stigma for pharmacists participating in a needle exchange program. I will also briefly touch upon disposal of medications and syringes and why it's so vital for the health of the community. So let's talk about some of the background issues with needle exchange programs and why they are needed in the community. The Harm Reduction Coalition defines harm reduction as a set of practical strategies and ideas aimed at reducing negative consequences associated with drug use. Needle exchange programs should be in a non-threatening public location. What better place than in your local pharmacy within your community? This location provides a well-educated and easily accessible healthcare professional, as well as a safe public location to safely exchange needles and or to dispose of them properly. Some of the most startling facts about needle exchange programs involve HIV and hepatitis C infection rates. Currently, every 43 minutes, someone in the US is infected with HIV through the use of a quote unquote, dirty needle. Intravenous drug use is the cause of one out of every three HIV infections and two out of every three hepatitis C infections. HIV prevalence is incredibly 28 times higher in IV drug users than the general population. Furthermore, there are currently 3 million intravenous drug users in the world living with HIV. There are an additional 10 million intravenous drug users worldwide living with hepatitis C. The good news is that preventative treatments for HIV are being more widely accepted. PrEP, a once daily tablet of Truvada, can be used in conjunction with other safe sex practices to lower one's chances of contracting HIV significantly. Curative treatments now exist for hepatitis C and are widely accepted as safe and extremely effective. While some treatment models have costs exceeding $90,000 for three months of treatment, causing challenges in access to care, this is a potential lifelong cure. With less spread of these diseases, we can help reduce the risk of spreading HIV and hepatitis C in intravenous drug users. So now that we have reviewed the rates of common diseases caused by intravenous drug use, let's discuss the methodology behind what it takes to run a successful needle exchange program. There are presently three main models sell syringes directly to consumers, exchange re harm reduction kits for vouchers, and use grant funds or pharmacy funds to purchase and supply all needs for the syringe exchange. Pharmacies have the advantage of being an ideal location to conduct a syringe exchange due to their extended hours and location. Patients also have the advantage of consulting with a pharmacist to answer simple questions like wound care and the potential of linking patients to care with any available substance use resources in the area. While working as a pharmacy intern in Massachusetts, it was mandated by law that we sell syringes to patients to help combat the growing opioid and heroin epidemic. Along with the sale of each pack of needles, we also distributed a Department of Health and Human Services form notifying patients of the risk of continued intravenous drug use, as well as links to treatment and proper slash safe disposal of the needles. This leads me to talk about the importance of safe disposal through the use of sharps containers, or teaching a patient how to make one out of a simple laundry detergent bottle filled with some kitty litter on the bottom. When facing a patient who is trying to safely dispose of their needles and syringes, we need to help direct them to safe disposal sites, whether that is a local health department, fire station, or other known disposal site in the community. The last thing we want is used needles being left outside or in public areas. Syringe and needle exchange programs are highly cost effective. An average fully realized needle exchange program has an annual budget of less than $200,000 per year. These would supply not only needles, but also cotton, band-aids, portable sharps containers, and cookers. They will also reduce the HIV infection rate of the user, partner, and offspring by 33%. Cost effectiveness range per averted case is three dollars to $50,000. This has comparative cost effectiveness to zidovidine in perinatal transmission. One of the most important reasons I am speaking to you today is to address the stigma of running these types of programs, as well as general stigma for the patient, pharmacists, and pharmacy staff. Opponents in the pharmacy field feel that giving clean needles to a known intravenous drug user encourages and promotes the use of illicit drug. This viewpoint 
is shared by many medical professionals and community members and are similar to feelings about naloxone use. But through education and marketing, opinions are slowly starting to change nationwide. This change is due in part to naloxone being likened to the use of other commonly accepted emergency medicine methods. A great example is a comparison of the use of an EpiPen for an anaphylactic reaction and the use of naloxone for a patient who has overdose. I'm not saying that we should liken needle exchange to single-use glove wearing in between medical services, but this is a best practice that is obviously widely accepted. Even the thought of an average patient or pharmacist receiving a needle that was just used for a flu shot and was going to be reused on another patient is unthinkable. And really, at the end of the day, regardless of what is in the syringe and needle, the same safe and accepted medical practice should be applied here. Many opponents also portray needle exchange programs as the pharmacist, medical professional, or even locally elected officials as saying that illicit drug use is accepted, so long as clean needles and syringes are used. Addressing this is another huge aspect of stigma reduction for the end user. Better education is needed for the community and pharmacists. At the end of the day, I've spoken with many former intravenous drug users through the Wake County Opioid Coalition's meetings. The person with substance use disorder will use regardless of whether they have a clean needle or not. If at the point of sale or at the exchange they feel scorned or shunned or turned away, that will not stop them from buying and using the illicit substance. It will not stop them from using. But intravenous drug users need to use best practices, which includes using clean needles. It is important for all of us to realize that this is a public health threat and we are one cog in the wheel that can help stop the spread of disease, which is the ultimate goal of a needle exchange program. It is also key as pharmacists to educate users when interacting with a patient to answer any questions they have. Help them realize why using clean cotton and cookers is key to help stopping the spread of hepatitis C. Most people don't even realize that hepatitis can live for up to 72 hours on a cooker and in the cotton swabs used. Now ultimately, at the end of the day, we want intravenous drug users to be drug free, but we have resources in our community to link patients to, and that's why when running a syringe exchange program, or even simply selling syringes to intravenous drug users, we encourage and educate them about available resources and try to engage them to consider treatment. Harsh judgment and blame tend to perpetuate unsafe practices potentially creating further public health issues through the spread of HIV and hepatitis, amongst other negative social determinants of health for themselves and the community. Ignorance is not bliss in this situation. I would like to reiterate that this is not the only way to solve the issue of illicit intravenous drug use, but this is one part of making sure that disease is not spread. It lowers costs to the community and helps to link patients with care and reduces the stigma of having the individual seek help once they are ready to receive it. It may be overused, but I truly feel that we are all six degrees of separation away from anybody in the world. There's only one degree of separation between you as a pharmacist and an intravenous drug user. It is your duty as a healthcare professional to help all patients be well and be as healthy as possible. Now is the time during the current opioid crisis to rethink what you may have been taught or have preconceived notions about. We need to help our friend, our neighbor, and any person in our community to help address their substance use addiction issue. Even if we cannot stop the person from using right at that moment, we need to stop the spread of disease through the use of dirty syringes. It is a public health threat that needs to be addressed and is relatively simple to fix. I would like to reiterate that with proper education of pharmacists, we can reduce the stigma associated with providing and or selling needles to intravenous drug users. Through this education and reduced stigma, successful programs can be set up throughout our state. We also need increased communication and support from the community. Pharmacists and pharmacies alone cannot tackle this issue. Educating locally elected officials and reaching out in our own communities is a start to help change the mindset and get buy-in before implementing a successful needle and syringe exchange program. In North Carolina, we also have the advantage of having the STOP Act, which greatly helps our implementation of these projects, makes the community aware, and helps reduce the stigma associated with substance use throughout our state. Lastly, funding is necessary. While I have outlined the cost savings to the community as a whole, organizations and individuals will have to come up with funding to make these programs successful. 
It is key to open communication lines with recovery communities, local public health departments, state DHHS, and various other partners. There is the potential for grant funds and support from other institutions that may not be able to run a syringe exchange program, but may want to help support another organization's efforts. If we all work together as a pharmacy community, we can help run and maintain safe and effective needle exchange programs that will ultimately help the end user as well as the health of the communities we live and work in every day.